Hello and welcome to another episode of Q&A with Dr. B. Today's episode, we're going to learn how to create this love cutout that looks like this right here in Corel Draw SE. Okay, so here we go. We've opened Corel Draw SE, and now what we're going to do is create a new document. So I'm going to go to File, or I could click on this icon in the toolbar here that would create a new document. Now we're going to set this up with a width of 11 and a height of 8.5. It doesn't really matter what our page size is because when we're going to save it as a SVG later on, it will the, the page size won't matter. But we'll go ahead and set it wide so that when we creating our words, we have a nice space to work with. So here we go. You can see in the toolbar up here, we have 11 by 8.5. We have it set to landscape. We can use our zoom tool to zoom to the page and that will zoom and if we keep our design on the page that kind of helps a little bit. So now what we're going to do is write our letters. So I'm going to choose the text tool here in the toolbox and then I'm going to click on my page. If you don't click on your page first and get this cursor then when you make changes in the properties bar up here then you have some problems a little bit so I am going to choose the impact font because it's a nice wide bold font and it's good for our um, situation here where we're going to write the word love and then I'm going to also choose a hundred point for the font so it's nice and big to get started then I'm going to type the word love with cap all caps L O V E and then there we have it you'll notice over here in the object manager where it says artistic text that means we just created an object that is an artistic text object now I'm going to click on the pick tool up here and we'll see that our object is selected and we have it selected here. The next step we're going to do is convert this to a curve. So I'm going to go to Object and then you'll see Convert to Curves. And what that will do is it will no longer be an artistic text object, it will be curves. And so you'll see up here in the Object Manager it converted it to curves. And now if we click on this second tool here, the shape tool, you'll notice all the nodes along it. So I'm going to go back to the pick tool. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the corner here. We want to make sure our object is locked um, as far as the aspect ratio there. And I'm going to just stretch it until it fills my whole sheet of paper. there we go so now we have it nice and big what we want to do <clears throat> is we have one big curve here we want to break it apart so all the letters are a separate curve so while it is selected I'm going to go to objects again and then I'm going to find break curve apart and then when I do that you'll notice over here in the object manager a series of a bunch of curves not just one curve and if I click on the individual curve, you'll notice now the L is selected. Then if I click on this one, the O is selected, and so on. And so while I have the O selected, I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. And notice I still have this little sliver, because what it did when it broke the letters apart into individual curves, the center of the O became a curve by itself. So I'm going to click here until I have that one selected and then I'm going to click delete on my keyboard and now I have my letters ready to go. Now what I want to do is I'm going to stretch out the lower part of my L just a little bit. So I'm going to use my shape tool here. Select. I'm going to select the L then go to my shape tool 
I'm going to draw a rectangle around the two nodes that are at the bottom of the L. And I'm going to just drag that out just a little bit so that I can have just a little bit longer L right there. And now you can see this L kind of matches the E a little better. The next step is to import my um, object that I want to replace the O with. And I'm going to choose the um, an apple to put in here just so it matches the one that we started with. I'm going to use my import tool here or you can go to file import then I'm going to select the Apple SVG click import and then place it on these page where I want it. Now you'll notice it's too large so what I have to do is use my um, handles in the corners and adjust it. Again you want to make sure it's using the center one so it stays um, stays the aspect ratio stays correct and then notice my cursor changes from when I'm on the handle it's two arrows that lets me know that I'm ready to click on that handle and move and when I'm on the apple notice the cursor changes to this double arrow like a little plus sign with arrows on each side that tells me that if I click when I have that cursor it will let me move so I can just drag it a little bit like this and now what we're going to do is recolor the um, apple and you do that just simply by going over here clicking the color you want now if you want to do the stem and the leaf a separate color we have to again break it apart because it's all one or we can ungroup it so we'll go to group and ungroup the object and then we can click on the individual parts and I can make each individual part a different color and it just depends on how you want it so that when you cut it out you can cut out different colors in your um, silhouette or Cricut so there we have it now we have it different colors so now what I need to do is export this as an SVG so that I can bring it into my Cricut or Silhouette software. So I'll simply use my export tool on my toolbar here or I can go to File, Export, and then I'll decide where I want to put it here. Down here I'm going to call this my Love Apple and I want to make sure I change it to SVG right here and then I'll click export and it will export it as an SVG I'm gonna just keep the defaults there I also want to save it as an SDR file so that I can come back and um, make edits later on so I'm gonna do a save as make sure I'm in the folder where I want to save it. I'm going to call this my Love Apple and I'm going to call it 2 because I've already had one in there. Click Save and now notice at the top it tells me the path. It tells me exactly where it is saved and the file name of this particular image that we're working on. That's it. I hope you enjoyed making this object and this image so that you can use it in your cutting machine.